Last week, the South African Reserve Bank announced that it would leave repo rates unchanged at 7%. But what does this really mean for the everyday South African? The decision by the Monetary Policy Committee comes whilst the final S&P ratings decision is expected this Friday. Moody's and Fitch uh, have revised their credit outlook for the country down to negative. The country's currency, its future and its respective impact on the strength of the economy and the value of the run will be on shaky ground for some time to come. And tasked with the prime mandate of protecting the value of our currency against rising inflation, we're joined by the governor of the Reserve Bank, Lesecha Kanyaho, to discuss our economic situation. Dr. Governor, pleasure to have you with us, sir. Pleased to be here. Much uh, appreciated that you could find time to be with us. We are fortunate. You know, normally we should go to where you are, you see, in, uh, in Tswan, in Pretoria, and come to talk to you there, but you paid us a visit and we appreciate it. Um, just briefly explain the primary mandate of the Reserve Bank before I talk about the processes that work within the system. In a way, you sort of like uh, captured it in your, your intro. Um, the, the, the mandate of the, the Reserve Bank is derived from the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. And that mandate is to protect the value of the currency in the interests of balanced and sustainable growth in the Republic. And that is in the Republic is a very important uh, word because people then tend to think that when we say we are protecting the value of the currency, we are protecting the exchange rate. Mm. No, we actually protect what the rent can buy here at home. So when prices rise, uh, your rent buys less and less goods and services. Yes. So our responsibility is to then um, act in such a way that prices do not rise uh, and erode the buying power of your rent. So when we say we are protecting the value uh, of the currency, that is what we mean, making sure that your rent continues to buy the basket of goods that you are currently enjoying. Okay, I understand you, I'm just expanding further, that your mandate is not necessarily to worry about where is the rent pegged against other currencies, currencies. but is a rent today the same rent tomorrow type of thing, right? That if, if I've got 10 rand and I could buy something for 10 rand of a particular value today, I should be able to do so easily the next day, something like that. Well, the way in which uh, one has to see it is that um, uh, for the rent today to buy exactly the same basket of goods tomorrow, mm -hmm. basically inflation will have to be zero. Yes. But uh, in economics, zero inflation is also bad news yes. because uh, that is what the developed countries are grappling with now. Yeah. They are even grappling with, uh, uh, with negative, uh, negative inflation. Sure. So in a way, in protecting the value of the currency, you are simply arresting the rate at which that erosion is actually taking place. So in okay. the case of South Africa, uh, the mandate set by the government was to say we must keep prices, price increases between 3 and 6% uh, 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 per annum. So okay. Now, let's talk about what your decision recently, which, and it's not only by, all, all, all by yourself, but yes. it's a committee made yeah. up of other people. You have decided to keep the interest rates where they are, yes. but you are doing so in an environment that's facing different kinds of pressure. You've referred to one that would be inflation, for instance, and you talk about balance of payments, you talk about this, that, and the other. Just explain to us how you arrived at that decision and what are the factors that you consider uh, when you contemplate raising interest rates? Uh, or cutting them. Or, or, or keeping yeah, them the same. Exactly. Um, yeah. They are exactly the, uh, the same factors, but they all move in different directions. So from meeting to meeting, mm. we would then say to you that here are the risks to the inflation outlook, and here are the risks to the growth outlook, and here are the risks to the employment outlook, mm. and uh, based on that, we have arrived at this decision. So... The factors that are considered, we, we, we first look at what is happening with the, with the global economy because South Africa is a small, open economy. So the South African economy is affected by developments in other parts of the, uh, other parts of the world. Yeah. Then we look at what is happening with international uh, financial markets. We look at then domestic economic, uh, uh, economic trends, what is happening in the real sector, be, meaning what is happening in manufacturing, in mining, in agriculture, uh, and so forth. And then we then look at um, the interaction between the South African economy and the, uh, the global economy, what you had earlier on alluded to as balance of uh, payments. So we look at cross-border movement of goods and services, mm. we look at cross-border uh, capital flows, 
and, and so forth. And we will then assess um, these different factors. What does the balance show us? Do the balance show us that inflation will be going up? If it shows that inflation will be going up and could remain high for a persistent period of time, we adjust policy, meaning we will be uh, increasing interest rates. Mm -hmm. But it could also happen that the balance of these factors show that inflation will be going down. And because inflation will be going down, we might feel that uh, it is time now to provide further accommodation, meaning you are reducing the interest rates. OK. Now, of all of those factors, which one is key that uh, normally influences your decision? We have to take all, all of, of them, them into uh, into account. And that is why we keep on talking about the balance of risks. Okay. Because sometimes these factors might be moving in, uh, uh, in opposite direction. So if you go back to uh, January last year, the oil price uh, declined to about $30 per, uh, per barrel. Yes. That puts downward pressure on, um, uh, on, uh, on inflation. Yes. But at that same time, the rent depreciated against the against the, the major currency sure. that puts uh, upward pressure on uh, uh, on inflation. But at that time, when we assessed it, we said that well, on the balance of risks, it looks like inflation will uh, be within the target. And in that instance, then you do uh, you do nothing. So now, you look at all of these things. You have to look at the oil price. You sure. have to look at the exchange rate. Uh, you have got to look at what are what is happening within the rest of the economy and uh, decide on that. But here you are, Governor, together with your colleagues, you are exposed to all this information. You consider it regularly and you think about it, but we've got so-called triple challenges in South Africa. We almost own them now. It's almost uh, like we're proud that we talk about these things. High unemployment rate, high inequality levels, and high poverty levels in our society. And it's been going on forever, for as long as I can remember, at least in the past uh, uh, 15 years or so. And it does not seem like we're making any movement there. There's no difference. Why are we not capable, as an economic system, to reduce these problems, which affect a large number of South Africans? Um, indeed, it is a challenge. Um, but there are two things that we've got to distinguish uh, here. One is the role of monetary policy, which is but just but one yes. component of, uh, uh, of economic policy. And the other, which economists generally will say, are structural uh, policies. These are things because unemployment is a long-term uh, uh, issue. Yes. Poverty has been with us for some time. There isn't much you can do with monetary policy to reduce uh, uh, inequality. But there are things that you can do with monetary policy. Monetary policy does affect growth in the cycles, in other ways, the way in which we think about it. Every economy has got what we call the potential growth rate. The potential growth rate is like the speed limit of that economy. Yes. In other ways, if we say potential growth in South Africa is 2%, what that means is that if the economy grows by more than 2%, it will then start to lead to a rise, general rise in prices, inflation will go yes. up. And, um, but it's also, it could happen that uh, the economy is growing way less than uh, the potential growth. And economists refer that as the output, uh, the output gap. Mm. The output gap thus plays a very important role in the decision of the uh, monetary policy uh, committee, which is one of the factors that we consider. Now, the other two that you, uh, you had mentioned of poverty and uh, unemployment, you need growth yes. uh, to get... Um, um, a, a, a better hold of uh, poverty. And actually, economic policy should be focusing not so much on unemployment, although it's just the other side. The focus should be on creating the jobs. Yes. But for, you to create, for an economy to create the jobs, the economy must grow. Yes. We are expecting the economy to only grow by 0.4% uh, this year. It is not about to create the kind of jobs that we are looking for. And so we enter into the realm of what uh, economists will call st the structural policies, which I had earlier alluded to. The one thing about this country is that this economy is actually overanalyzed. We know what problems this economy is facing. And there isn't a shortage of plans to deal uh, with it, but we are having an execution deficit. So you can go back and say that there's the National Development Plan. Mm. It had identified mm. the constraints to, 
uh, so growth and development in this country. It spelled out a plan for a uh, 2030 and say, just go and implement it. Prior to the National Development Plan, there was the new growth path. There was ASGISA. Mm. Um, there was the microeconomic reform program and so forth. All of those things is what you actually concretely need to do uh, to deliver on jobs, to eradicate poverty, to uh, reduce inequality. The one thing that is striking about South Africa and the level of inequality, people think that is because there are people who are earning so much and people who are earning this little. Well, the problem is deeper than that. There are people who have got zero income. Yes. They are unemployed. And that will mean that our inequality becomes so stuck when you compare us with, uh, uh, with other countries. And so, as I had said, monetary policy affects the cycles. It doesn't affect the overall structure mm. uh, of the economy. Mm. The overall structure of the economy, you need to be doing the things that government had identified and said must be done in terms of the National Development Plan. Yeah, and uh, I'm not going to... I was about to ask you this question, Governor, and say, why are we not doing that? And I'm sure you'll say, well, I don't know, I can't tell you. <laughs> we as the Reserve Bank are doing what we're supposed exactly. to do. And those who are supposed to do the other parts, it's up to them whether they do or do not do. But certainly, as you say, we do have a problem. In uh, South Africa, the plans are there. We are suffering the execution deficit, as you call it. I mean, the uh, statistician general recently told us that unemployment rates have actually now gone higher yes. to 27 percent, yes. right? And I, su I, su I, su I suppose there's no democracy in the world that's actually sustainable with such high unemployment rates. I mean, normally, Governments get toppled or so when it's 15 to 20 percent and or alternatively they have to find a way of reducing because elections are normally fought around these issues. Well, that, uh, uh, that happens as I said. We've got to go out and do the things that uh, we don't even have to go and figure them out because we have pronounced yes. this is what we will do in terms of the National Development Plan. This is what we will do in terms of the new growth path. So we don't this need any what, new plan, in other words. This is what we will do in terms of the Industrial Policy Action Plan. Yes. These plans are there. We must go and execute them. And we're not. Now, the history of our economy um, was based on mining for a long time. And of course, now it looks like the financial services sector is one of the bigger sectors in, in our economy. But it does not create employment. Is there anything, when you look at the different sectors of the economy, from uh, where you are sitting with the colleagues at the bank, where you think South Africa could make changes that might um, generate some activity that creates employment? In a way, the thing about picking sectors is a big issue amongst us economists. Uh, because if you think that you could put uh, bureaucrats to choose and say this sector or that sector, many sectors sometimes emerge and then uh, economists start asking the question, oh, this sector is growing, it's showing, uh, it's showing potential. For the kind of labor force we have, we've got to be creating jobs for the labor force we have rather than the one we wished we had. Yes. In other ways, in the case of South Africa, we have got a lot of lowly skilled uh, people. The sectors that tend to absorb those kind of uh, skills swiftly are sectors like tourism. Of course, mining is still very important. I think it's still uh, a very important sector in the economy, manufacturing, agriculture. You can, go, you can go through and say that these sectors, they are there. What are the constraints in these things? And when you go to various of these plans of, uh, uh, of government, you will find that these things have been identified and mm. said that uh, we've there got to There are plans as well for those. There are plans, uh, yeah. there are plans for those. I mean, the Minister of uh, Tourism is constantly talking about the potential of uh, tourism. And one of the positive aspects to actually come from a, a weaker end, uh, funnily, had been that it has made South Africa such a cheap destination. Tourists should be flocking uh, to South Africa and we should be saying, yes, South Africa is open uh, for tourists. And you could see this thing, number of tourist arrivals uh, have gone up. Clearly, South Africa is a very viable proposition for, uh, for the world tourists. I have to ask you this question, uh, Governor, and very brief response from you. What is the size of our stock exchange in relation to the GDP and why that disparity? How do you explain that gap? Um, 
you, you caught me. It's some three hundred percent of GDP, something like yes. uh, something like that. Yes. It's, it's I think twice it's so, or three times it, or, uh, the, uh, the size of GDP. Yeah. But this, you know, stock uh, stock exchanges today, it's uh, the stock exchange has gone down. That multiple yeah. changes. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's definitely bigger than uh, bigger than the yes. uh, uh, the size of uh, 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 of GDP. But that is why in uh, earlier on I started talking about the real economy because the stock exchange is not it's a mechanism to raise funding yes. for businesses it is not in itself an economy uh, 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 per se sure. so you will uh, tend to find uh, uh, that happening economists would tend to look at the extent of the financial sector of which the stock exchange is also part yeah. of the financial sector and say uh, is this too big relative to the size of the economy? And what does history tell us? And history does tell us that sometimes when you have got a financial sector that is too big relative to the size of the economy, you end up in a financial crisis. Uh, the, the, the economists have written so many books about it. Sure. Uh, uh, and it's maybe it. one of those, uh, those reasons why, as you say, the stock market can crash not once in a while if it, ha if it gets to that point. But um, it's a discussion on its own. Yeah. I appreciate your time, Governor. So, so far we're okay. Ratings, we're fine, you think? Well, um, we are fine uh, for now. I think that Team South Africa has put a gallant effort uh, in uh, preventing a downgrade from, uh, taking, uh, from taking place. And, um, and hopefully we will be able to sustain the momentum and withstand uh, uh, any potential future downgrades. Thank you very much. That's the governor of the Reserve Bank, Lesecha Kanyaho, paid us a visit just to explain how the bank works. And of course, we indulged in discussing the economy and getting a sense of how people like him, influential figures in our society, are thinking about the economy and what can be done. So let's hear your views. What do you think can get South Africa growing again? Write to us tonight at mudise.tv. Share your opinions with us on Twitter at Tim Modise.